Hello everyone, Renegorn here. So I just wanted to make a quick video following up um, on my previous one on Elden Ring's PvP system. And basically wanted to explain kind of how it works in Elden Ring and go over a little bit um, about how to do it if you want to, how to opt into more of it, and um, how to avoid it, I guess. So first off, Elden Ring's PvP is actually essentially optional. Um, the only way you can be invaded is if you already have somebody in your game. Now, most of the time, if you've already summoned somebody, you're probably right outside the boss room, so you're going to go into the boss fight anyway, and you're not going to be invaded while you're fighting the boss. In fact, as soon as you go into a boss room, it sends the invader home. So... Unless you're actively running through a large zone with another player, your chances of being invaded are pretty low. Um, and even then, once you're doing that, you still don't really have to worry too much because you will have you and your friend there already. Now, there are ways you can do more PvP if you want to. Um, the first one is by being the invader. And that is by using an item called the Festering Bloody Finger, which is a consumable, single-use. It will put you into another player's world. Now, keep in mind that that player is going to have a phantom with them. Almost guaranteed. I say almost because there is another item called the Taunter's Tongue. Now, the Taunter's Tongue lets people invade you even if you don't have somebody else in. So it's essentially a way to opt in to be invaded without already being in co-op mode. Additionally, it decreases the number of players um, that you can summon. Normally you can summon two, this puts it down to one, and allows up to two people to invade you. What this does is essentially it keeps the same number of players as four, but it makes it, I guess, a more even match in invaders versus players. Now there are certain PvP zones, I know there are also PvP covenants, um, I haven't really looked into that much because as I said in my last video, I don't really enjoy PvP, but for those of you that do, I figured I would kind of go over this a little bit. Um, there are two other items for PvP that I know of. There's a small red effigy which puts you into a summoning pool, um, and basically what that does is it puts your sign near a, um, I don't remember what the effigies are called, but essentially there's these little effigies in the game world that underneath them will have um, summoning signs that you can click on. And then once you've activated those, it will summon them. So that allows you to be summoned as an invader from that pool, so just a bunch of people can see you from that. Um, the other one is the Duelist Furled Finger. Now that puts down a specific summon sign that somebody can go up and click on and summon you to invade. Um, and what that does is, again, those two I think both bypass the requirement to be in co-op. Um, I think. I don't actually know. Again, I haven't engaged in it too much. But those are options that are there for you. Now, as far as playing PvE goes, you also have some more options if you're trying to avoid PvP. Um, first of all, if you're playing by yourself, you're not going to get invaded. So unless you actively opt into it, it's really not going to happen. Um, it's also really easy to play by yourself because you will have spirits that you can summon, and the spirits you can only summon if you don't have other players. So single player is a lot more viable than it used to be. Um, you've got a lot more tools at your disposal. The spirits are just essentially NPCs that will come and help you fight. And again, you can summon people right outside the boss room, so you can go through your dungeons or whatever solo, and then once you want to do the boss, then you can summon people, and again, you won't be invaded until after somebody's already in. So if you do get invaded and you're just hanging out outside of it, you can walk into the boss room and it will send the invader home. Um... There are two other PvP items, so if you want to fight people but you don't necessarily want to be the invader or you don't want to be invaded, there's the blue cipher ring, 
which is an item that you can activate that lets you... Um, it gets you summoned as a blue phantom. And so what the blue phantom does is it is a phantom where you get summoned, you go to somebody else's world after they've already been invaded, and you help them beat their invader. I Well, I guess in this they're called duelists. Um, so if you defeat their duelist, it will send you home so you do not go into the boss fight like you would normally as the uh, golden cooperator. You only do that as the blue cooperator. Now, there's also the white cipher sign. Um, so if you are playing by yourself and maybe you just summoned one person and you want to go through but you don't want to worry as much about an invader, um, you can use the white cipher sign and that will automatically summon somebody if you get invaded. So that will get an extra blue phantom so somebody else with the blue cipher ring will show up and help you. Now, that being said, um, at the moment, I don't think the PvP activity is super high. I think a lot of people are opting out primarily because you can only invade people who are already grouped up. And going in 1v2 is just... It, it's, it, it's a bit riskier. Um, I have only fought another player once in my 70 plus hours of gameplay that i put in so far. And that guy uh, left the game after we started, well, beating him up. Um, I've actually had a blue cipher ring activated just to see uh, whether or not I could go help somebody else. Because, again, I don't particularly enjoy PvP. I don't li like being invaded. But I don't mind helping somebody else defend themselves against that. So I wanted to try it just to see what it was like. And I've had it active for probably a good 20, 30 hours now, and I haven't been summoned once. So there's not a ton of PvP activity on this yet. Um, that might just be because people are getting a feel for the game, but there's a couple other factors that really play into this. One is that Elden Ring is huge. It is massive. It is absolutely ginormous. So being in the correct area, having somebody in the game, and then odds are low. Going to be in the right place at the right time at the right level to invade. Um, because all of the zones that you can invade in are all these miniature zones in the overarching world, and there are hundreds of them. So I, I think that's probably the biggest factor. Um, the other one is people are still getting used to the game it's new they haven't invested a lot into the pvp system and as far as i know the pvp covenant is more of until much later um i believe i was told that that will also not activate until you've already <laughs> invaded three times so you can't even talk to them um until you've already done three invasions which again you do get um, the Festering Bloody Fingers, they will give you three of those, so you can do that, but it's, you kind of have to go out of your way to really participate in invasions. So, yeah, I think that's it, um, but just wanted to give you guys a heads up, PvP is optional if, like me, you're not a huge fan of PvP, and maybe if that's a factor that's been putting you off of the Souls like games and you just didn't want to deal with it, don't worry. If you play Elden Ring, it's essentially a non factor. You're really not going to have anything to worry about. There is, however, I guess one last thing or caveat I should mention, um, and that is PvE invaders. You are still going to have to deal with those. They do function like PvP invaders. Uh, most of them are very difficult. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, and they will actually restrict you from going places, it'll take you off your horse, it will function exactly the same as a normal PvP encounter, but it will be an NPC, so if they kick your butt, you can go back, fight them again, and they've actually got good rewards as a general rule. Um, usually special weapons, or a talismans, or ashes of war, things like that. So, um, yeah. You will still have to deal with PvE invaders, but it's not quite the same. But yeah, uh, I think that's 
pretty much it. Thanks for listening. Love you guys. And uh, see you in Elden Ring.